So I recently shared a post on the channel that it is actually some pictures that popped up from my Facebook feed from roughly four years ago when I started my DIY home theater project in its original incarnation for the first time. And so I shared that as a posting and one of the comments that was made on that, a question, which was, why don't you spin out a video and talk about like, what are the, what are the things that you regret or what would you have done differently from the beginning in the project? So I made a list of those and All right, so I've got a couple of thoughts, re reflective thoughts, um, thinking back to when I did my theater for the first time and what I really would have done differently based on actually d redoing the home theater a second time and having used it for the last few years. And I would recommend there's a whole bunch of videos in the home theater playlist here on the channel talking about my perspective on the original build and on what I did under my home theater 2.0 banner. So for more exposition and deeper detail about various aspects, you know, go ahead and, and check those out. But if I could have done things differently four years ago, what would I have done? So number one, I would have gone with the scope screen. Um, I went with the 16-9 aspect ratio predominantly because I, I did the biggest screen that I could really do for the room that I had with speakers standing in the room. The light from the projector had to thread right in between the floor standing uh, front left and right speakers and I could only get so wide at that width. I didn't want to do a scope screen because I wanted my 16.9 images to be bigger. So for what I had at the time, actually 16.9 made the most sense because it gave me the net bigger screen for both types of wider and more normal aspect ratios. However, from a more an absolute scale, I would say that now having this, the, the much wider scope screen, but still being able to maintain a very tall 16.9 image is just pure awesome. Scope content is just the standard. Most of the movies, many of the movies that we watch, end up in a wider than 169 aspect ratio. And so being able to zoom those in, fill those up, get, get a, the much wider field of view, it just adds so much more immersion, envelopment, and all of that to using the home theater. And particularly too, not even just movies, but if you look at most of like the high-end TV shows that are out nowadays, the Star Wars shows, the Marvel shows on Disney Plus. I'm watching The Boys on Amazon Prime, the latest season right now. All Stranger Things, all of these shows are wider than 16.9 as well. So TV, high quality, like high production quality television is in many cases going wider than 16.9. So having scope for that is great. And gaming, wow, until you've gamed on an ultra wide monitor, and it took me a while before I realized this, being able to experience it in the theater for the first time, it just takes gaming to a whole nother level. Field of view, envelopment, all of that stuff. So yeah, number one, go scope and figure out how to get the biggest screen that you can get to get the extra wide benefit while still maintaining as high of a screen or as tall of an image as you can get so that your 16.9 image when you have it is still also as big as you can get it. So the second thing that I would have done differently from the very beginning is when my first incarnation I had a lot of gear in the room, really all the speakers. My heights were mounted on the walls on brackets. I had big floor standing speakers. I had my center channel on a stand under the screen. My surrounds around stands around the couch. And I really, I really, really much prefer being in the room, the presence of the room, the presentation of the room with now having gone to in walls and putting the speakers in the ceiling, basically hiding, hiding the stuff away and making the room more less about equipment kind of oppressively all around you and opening things up and 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 just having a different look and feel and presentation to the room. So in a home theater environment, I'm now very much a big proponent of making like more of an architectural design, putting stuff in the walls, hiding things behind treatments and, and you know, how, however you're able to do it, I find that I really prefer that room. And if again, if I could have done it differently or done it that way from the beginning, now knowing what I know, that that's number two. I would have I would have definitely pursued things that way. And so one and two actually kind of fold together into number three, which is get the front speakers behind the screen. And so th th this and they, they weave together under the idea that again I couldn't go bigger scope ultra wide because I had towers in the way. Well, you can take the towers out of the way and put those speakers behind the screen. Now you can go wider and you don't have anything obstructing your projected light from your projector 
It also serves the idea of integration because now looking forward at the front of my room, I don't see speakers. I don't really see, uh, I still have subwoofers up there, but I've, I've done a better job making those blend away in the darkness and the blackness. And so I see the image and I don't have this other stuff glossing and reflecting and taking my eyes away from the immersion of watching the content. So having that stuff behind the screen, uh, allowing the larger screen, but also too, taking that sound from a movie, uh, you know, a, a TV show perspective and anchoring it to the screen, you just can't get the same effect of merging your audio and your video together as when you have your speakers right directly behind that screen. And it flows together again as well because you wanna spread your speakers out enough so that your center and your left and right are not all packed so tightly together into, into the same direct area. You wanna be able to, to move them apart a little bit, spread them apart a little bit. So having a scope screen and being able to obscure your speakers lets you split them farther than a 16.9 would. So these these things kind of go together, but again, that the um, having that stuff, the audio quality of my room is now so much better. Those That front array is the most important, the center channel for all the dialogue. And having that sound emanate from the image, having it anchored and locked to the image, using the same speaker for the L, the C, and the R, having it in a vertical orientation, you don't have to have a compromised or a horizontal center. The center is now not disembodied right below the screen and, and emanating from a different point source than the people and the faces and the images that you're actually watching. All that stuff just adds so much. And I would, I would absolutely have, have done that from the beginning had I kind of known, known what I know and how much better this is than what I did the first time. The other thing that I would recommend, number four, I would say is putting a little more impetus on measuring and treating the room accordingly. I did treatments. I did them some months after I originally finished the room, and it was a night and day difference how they, they locked things down, they anchored the sound, they cleaned up the sound. Uh, but I did it more, I would say, open loop, meaning I, I wasn't maybe as technical with the measurements, un taking measurements, understanding what was going on in my room, and treating it accordingly. I sought consultation from GIK and, and they looked at the room and they did their analysis and they made their recommendations. But if I could go back to the very beginning and structure everything very specifically, measuring and analyzing and treating right away, right off the bat, according to those measurements, I would have put more time and effort into that. As it is, I've got now, the, the room is treated all around. I've got corners, I've got ceiling treatments, I've got wall treatments, I've got absorption, I've got diffusion. So I've got it all in there, but it was a little maybe less scientifically chosen than it could have been if I did it did it more based on the room's response and the room's measurements. So um, I think you can achieve amazing results in a space with proper treatments, properly chosen and properly applied. And so um, if I could do that differently, I would go back and definitely raise my technical bar in terms of um, how I applied and when I applied room treatments to the space. The fifth thing that if, if I could go back and do it, I, I probably would, is I might have put a little more credence on, on building out the space more. I had a room that was, it was already there, it was already established, it was already drywalled, and I, I set a goal for myself to kind of work within the confines of the established space. I didn't really want to rebuild things. I didn't want to structurally change the room in, in any major or material way. And that was great in terms of expediting the project, making it simpler. I painted everything black. I installed a bunch of stuff and that all worked out fine. Now, lo looking back, if I would have maybe put, I don't know what it would have cost, let's just say 10 grand. If, if 10 grand, I could have uh, done some things myself or hired a handyman to come in and kind of pull the trim down, do a green glue and a second layer of drywall, put the trim back up. I repainted the whole room anyway, minus the trim, but I repainted the walls, I repainted the ceiling, we redid the floor. So now that everything's done and it's in, I can very likely say that I don't think I'll ever go back and do that. But now using the room and putting more powerful subwoofers and bass response in there and understanding like what I hear in terms of outside noise and propagation into the room and out of the room, in my HVAC system, the room could probably be really taken to a whole nother level of performance had I done stuff like that. And the time to do it would, would have been in the beginning. It would have added a lot more cost to the initial project. 
and I don't know necessarily then, given what I was spending on gear and everything else, I didn't do it specifically because I didn't want the complexity and I didn't want to allocate that money. But in the long run, I would have ended up with a much better room probably for having done that. And so maybe that's an example where I should have done it a little slower. I should have taken more time. Maybe if I would have stretched the project out in terms of when I started to when the room was ready, added another six months or maybe a year, that, that would have been a long time to have it functional and, and fun and ready to use. But it would have still been now several years removed and done, and I think I would have ended up with a better space. So I guess retro, re, uh, reflectively then, don't skimp on the structural elements because particularly later on when you're done, you're probably not going to go back and do them. The time to do them, stuff like that is at the beginning. And then the last one I'll say number six is I did opt for a couch instead of chairs and I find myself or I have found myself really jonesing for theater chairs. Something more sitting, supportive. I find that I sit on the couch and I, I lean back and I lay back and it's just not as supportive or comfortable. Um, the family really likes to lounge on the chases at the far ends, but of course the far ends is the worst, probably you know, arguably the worst performing seats of the room. We really want to be sitting more towards the middle seat or the middle middle thirds. And, and it'd be nicer. I, I tend to often sit in the middle a lot. My wife is sitting farther off on the right. I'd like to be closer to her. So in order to do that, she's not coming this way. I've got to go that way, which puts pushes me sitting further out to the side. If we had a row of five chairs, I'd probably be sitting in that middle seat. My wife would be sitting directly to my right or left. She would probably be having a better theater audio video experience for it we would have the proximity to each other the other seats would be there for the kids so in in some respects i do kind of regret the couch and interestingly I, I, reading a lot of other folks takes on seating uh, a lot of folks tend to often regret what they did because maybe they feel the grass is greener so take this one with a little bit of little bit of caveat or a little you know a little bit of analysis for what really might work for you I've read plenty of people that did go the theater chair route saying, oh, I wish I wish I would have done a couch. That would have worked better for me in this reason. So um, I hope in some respect that my desire for the chairs isn't just a grass is greener. I think in my mind I'm formulating pretty good reasons and rationale and value and benefit about why I wish I would have had them from the beginning. And at some point in time, I probably will still do them and put them in. Again, doing it from the beginning would have been cheaper and it would have been less wasteful. I've got a $2,000-ish IKEA couch sitting in there that we really don't have another use for. If I go and buy chairs now, what do I do with that couch? Used furniture is, is basically worthless, so I'm, I'm not going to recoup the money or recover the money that I spent on that couch. Really think about your seating. Really think about what you want out of your seating, who's sitting in there, how, the, how you're using the room. Again, for me, though, if I would have done it differently, now looking back, I would much rather be sitting in a chair than sitting on that couch, and I think it would have been a better decision. So there you go, six six things. If I could go back and do them differently from the very beginning, that's what I would have done. Thankfully, at least in my space, I was able to remedy most of these, and the chair uh, the chair one I can remedy at another point. But it cost me it cost me more money than it needed to, for sure. Doing something and then redoing it. Thankfully, I was able, when I did my redo, I was able to sell a lot of equipment and make pretty good money selling the used things and recovering what I spent or buffering against uh, or what I was spending to, to change over to the scope screen and put the speakers in the wall versus in the room and all that. So I got a little bit lucky in that regard, but it, it still ended up costing me and it certainly cost me a lot more time and effort and energy spending time in the room to set things up once, take things out and set things up again. So sound off in the comments. If you have a home theater, uh, what, what would you have done differently? Share for the other folks reading. And if this type of information is helpful to you as well, let me know in the comments if, uh, if something that I uh, can reflect on from my space can help you maybe make a better decision. It's one of the things I really want the channel to be all about. So thanks so much for watching. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and come on back for a whole bunch more home theater AV and other techie fun. Thanks.